Hey friends, this is another Lo-Fi Let's Play with me, Lee Alexander, and today we'll be playing the 1988 interplay game Neuromancer based on the William Gibson universe and of course the novel of the same name. And when I say playing, it's a bit of a generous interpretation of what we'll be doing today because of course uh, this game, it's uh, emulated from the Apple IIGS with a very imperfect mouse and keyboard interface. So what we'll be doing uh, maybe calling it playing would be generous. Uh, it has a sort of clumsy interface. I'll be mixing mouse and keyboard a little bit, but that's suitable for the cyberpunk universe, isn't it? Like a couple of motherboards stitched together by hand. We'll be sort of clumsily making our way through this magnificent world. And uh, it's excellent, the Gibson universe, isn't it? This sort of future past, this uh, place where our dreams of science fiction meet the rough realities of, of the darkest edges of the cities in which we live. I have to say, I've been thinking a lot about cyberpunk lately, um, you know, reading some 90s memoirs, uh, unlike my own book, Breathing Machine, which was written last year, the 90s memoirs I've been reading were written in the 90s, and uh, it sort of reminded me of some of the dreams that we had when we were young, that we would sort of find a world beyond the machine, and, uh, and given that you know, in my personal and professional life and that of many others in my field this week, everyone's been dreaming of conspiracy theories and belonging to something bigger. I'm sort of touched by that image right now. So let's see. Let, let's begin. Um, you've just spent the night sleeping face down in a plate of synth, sp synth spaghetti in a bar called the Chatsubo. After rubbing the sauce out of your eyes, you can see Chiba sky through the window. The color of television tuned to a dead channel. A PAX booth is on the wall. Ratz's prosthetic Russian arm whines as he wipes the bar. His teeth are a webwork of East European steel and brown decay. God, that dead television channel is such a classic line, isn't it? Uh, Ratz says, I don't care if you eat that spaghetti or sleep in it. You still gotta pay for it. 46 credits. Well, it seems we've only got six credits, so that might be a problem for us, as is the fact that my... As you can see, my sloppy mouth, mouse interface has not caught up yet, but maybe with a little bit of luck we'll figure it out. Let's see, if I use the keyboard... Um, dun, dun, dun. No, there we go. Let's see, we only have six credits, so let's try going to the PAX computer. Public access system, because there's one in this room, I can use this icon that's directly in the menu in order to access it. Button or space to continue. How about space? I don't know what button is, maybe joystick button. Let's see, uh, we don't need the first time user info. Uh, I've been around the block a few times here. So uh, let's see, access banking interlink. So we have uh, Bama ID is this, and our account is uh, 2000. Uh, let's download our credits, because that's certainly enough to pay for our food. And uh, one thing that's sort of unique about this game is it does sort of provide you with a chunky, crude computer inf interface that you access at, at various points through your exp exploration of this world. So uh, we've gotten the credits, and uh, let's see what else is available on the, on the PAX system. When I was a girl, I used to go on Usenet back in the early 90s. You know, I'm not that old. I was probably too young to be on Usenet, 11, 12, 13 years old, looking at you know, conspiracy theories and tinfoil hat people and the weirdos and, and the sugar junkies and I wanted to be one of them so much, you know? Uh, let's let's read the news. Let's see what the headlines are. Um, bar food is declared fatal. That probably has some in, in implications for us. <laughs> let's see. Yeah, so uh, as this news scrolls back about how the precise combination of dietary delight we've just consumed here in rats is... Uh, Chatsubo bar um, revealed to be bad for you. Yeah, I uh, I used to go on all kinds of forums back in the day and, uh, you know, read about video games and music, news in brief. And, uh, you know, I always wanted to know what kind of cool people were out there on the internet just like me, what kind of other people were early adopters, you know, and, and I, I I also thought that video games were a way to access that sort of magical world and find my people. Farm animals kidnap UFO. Sheep says, we were just joyriding. Man eats his own head. He thought it was a donut, says the owner of Donut World, where the incident occurs. Okay. Um, yeah, and, uh, you know, there were all kinds of in-jokes and internet celebrities and, and people on Usenet and IRC that I aspired to be like. You know, I aspired to have people reading the things I posted and... You know, I was interested in flame wars as well, but I always thought those people would be kind of like me, you know? Anyway, let's see. 
What's on the bulletin board? It seems interesting, seems relevant. Um, let's view our messages here. I used to get excited to log in and see emails from strangers. Imagine that. These, these emails are all to me. Uh, let's see what Shin has to say. He says, um, better pick up your deck at my pawn shop, otherwise I'll have to sell it. Oh, of course, we need a deck because we're hackers in a cyberpunk universe. We are cowboys. Crazy Edo. I thought it would be cool to be a hacker. You know, I thought that hackers were cool people. I thought they were fashionable, nice people. I thought they were people like me, you know, and that when I one day made it into their world, I would be welcomed. Where's my caviar, says Crazy Edo. I said I'd trade you some software for it, remember? Okay. You know, when I was young, I didn't even know what caviar was. And uh, now it's one of my favorite foods, and I eat it times when I'm sad or when the internet is stressing me out. I buy a little black tin of cheap caviar from Western Beef in Ridgewood, Queens. And uh, that's how I sort of self-soothe. Self Who's Matt Shaw? Look at all these people writing to us. Since you've been out of touch for a while, and since you're an old friend, I thought I'd help you out with some comlink numbers to get you started. Use them as soon as you get your deck back. Yeah, I heard you had to pawn it, he says. And look, he isn't even mean about it. Imagine that. Not not mean about my economic stresses. Not not cruel, because we're in the same field, and, and that sounds like it would be good. You know, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get my tablet out and write some of these things down so I remember them. Remember back in the day you had to write things down? The internet was fun, and games were fun once, weren't they? So, um, cheapo for cheap hotel. And uh, I'm writing on penultimate with my fingertip. You might try it. It's sort of fun. Combining the old and the new in the, in the cyberpunk spirit. Reg fellow for regular fellows. Consumer rev for consumer review. All of those. We can probably always look uh, at the bulletin board again if we forget it. Here's an interesting message. Who is Armitage? It says, we're looking for a few good cowboys. Seeking adventure? Yeah. Like money? Heck yeah. Like living on the razor's edge? Good with a cyberspace deck? Simply by answering this ad with your Bama ID number, you can learn in, you can earn instant money and learn about an exciting opportunity. Wow, I love exciting opportunities. You know, that's why I got into video games and the internet. I always thought it was going to be a really cool place where everybody got along. Wow, okay, so um, I'm going to trust these randos with my banking information, you know? Uh, let's... Let's send a message, and I, I always think this part is cool, uh, where you write in your recipient for the first time. Okay, Armitage, I'm going to send you my banking number, which I did write down. 563-06118. You know, back in the day, I didn't even know my internet friends' real names, let alone what they did for jobs or, or anything about their personal information. But, you know, it seems things have changed. Uh, yes, let's send this message. Let's see if that resulted in a deposit in our bank account, shall we? Exit to main. Let's uh, access our banking interlink. Um, wow, look at that. It worked. Thanks, Bama. <laughs> you like that one, right? Sorry. No. <laughs> All right, so we are, we'll download our credits. We're, we're ready, certainly ready to pay for our dinner. And uh, let's see what's out there in the wonderful world of cyberpunk in the wonderful land of digital culture where we're all fantasists, dreamers, cowboys, things like that. Um, okay, let's... Oh, we have a pawn ticket for our deck as well. We pawned it at our friend Shin's. So uh, let's... Let's give... Oop, G for give, see? Uh, 46 credits, that's how much it costs. Thanks, friend artiste. Shin came by, but he didn't want to interrupt your beauty sleep. He still has your deck. Good to know. We did already know that, but this lets us uh, scroll through a selection of how to respond. Uh, let's be nice. Isn't it nice to give a good response on the internet? Anything else come up? And then you can press a uh, button, so to speak, to confirm. One of Lonnie Zone's girls was looking for you, too. You got biz with Zone? I don't know, do I? Uh, I suppose we should find out, find that out. So... Using our awkward key keystrokes, O, o K L semicolon, we're able to navigate the world of Neuromancer. Stepping outside this tavern, we find um, immediately the chat subo is closed by the public health department, and there is a security droid of some kind uh, requiring that we move along. And uh, it's a very uh, bad idea to disobey the police in this game. 
That's an interesting thing for me about uh, the modern media that I'm consuming. Um, I've been watching Orphan Black, I've been watching Utopia, and uh, I've been thinking a lot about uh, the modern way that we do science fiction and the modern way that we do, um, you know, moral panic around technology through entertainment. And the thing I'm finding the most interesting about the media I'm consuming these days is that nobody trusts the police. Uh, to me, it sort of reflects what's going on in the online environment. And in anything that I've been watching these days, TV, movies, someone gets shot, no one calls an ambulance, you know, something bad happens, nobody calls the cops because it's just not done. It never even occurs to our main characters to call the police because uh, we can no longer trust the infrastructure we live in. Um, all we have is each other, which makes it interesting that online environments lately have, have stopped feeling like a magical land. They've started feeling like an extension of threat. Anyway, uh, here we are in the place where organs are harvested. Uh, human internal organs float in a vast tank like some kind of frozen organic soup. A tall man waits with a permanent smile where his lips have been removed. His name tag identifies him as Chin. Okay, so this isn't Shin, this is Chin. Um, would you like to sell a body part? You know, you can never have enough money. I think, yeah, I will, because, you know, you wouldn't want to be begging on the internet. Um, I'd love to sell you a portion of my anatomy. That would be good. How about that? Uh, let's do that. Uh, wonderful. We currently have a need for the following parts, he says. Um... Let's see. More. Gallbladder. You know, nobody needs a gallbladder. Let's get rid of that. Make an extra 1,050 credits. That's great. Okay? Good. Sold it. Lovely. Enjoy your cheap plastic replacement, he says. And onward we go through, through our brave and beautiful new future. Um, let's try to get our deck back. How about that? Um, there's some... This, you know, there's some places that we can and can't go in, in the world of Neuromancer right now. Uh, I wouldn't advise walking into the donut shop because, uh, actually it's dominated by police. Uh, Microsofts, um, oh, here's what we have in, in our inventory. I pressed inventory instead of O to walk into the Microsofts store. You know, even though we don't have a deck, we can look into getting some softs, can't we? This is Larry's Rentals. Dubious software store. The walls are lined with slivers of Microsoft. Uh, spikes of colored silicone mounted on the cardboard for display. The shaved head of Larry Moe, with a dozen Microsofts protruding from the carbon socket behind his left ear, is visible beside the counter. You're looking to buy some softs? As a matter of fact, I am. Let's have a talk. Got anything good? All my softs are top quality. Too bad I don't have any right now. You know, I, I happen to know that's not true. Um, I tried asking him. No, let's not let's let's not threaten him with being police, and let's not ask him for empathy either. Do you know anything about? I just did this one time by accident, and I was rewarded by saying nothing at all. Which you know, sometimes saying nothing at all can be incredibly rewarded, rewarding. You know, sometimes not having an opinion not having something to say. I can sell you a cop talk skill chip. Wow, conspiracy. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, let's let's get that. Cool, we spent a, a mere hundred credits on the cop talk skill chips. Wow, it's like a tongue twister. Cop talk skill chip, cop talk skill chip. Try saying that a few times fast. Maybe I'm just exhausted and that's all. So uh, now now we know we, we know how to talk like cops, but we haven't got our deck back, so... Uh, I wonder if we can exit this room. Yeah, we can. There. What? Do I, do I have to infuriate this guy to make him let me out? Um, oh no, the door is at the bottom, that's why. This little gray line is the way we came in. Sometimes it's so hard to tell where you're coming from and where you're going if you're in the hardcore world of being a cowboy on the internet, you know? Uh, let's, let's enter in here. And uh, we find a, a little door at the end of this hallway. An attractive woman named Akiko is waiting for you here beside a massage table. This is a clean shop with a wax wooden floor. Uh, she's she's volunteering uh, or probably selling some kind of service to us. And uh, spoiler alert, you know, I have done some research. I've played this game a little bit. And if you were to accept uh, Akiko's uh, proposition, you would be uh, arrested and fined by the police. And interestingly enough in this game, even though even when you get arrested and fined, you can continue playing. Um... But, you know, you just have less money and, and it's harder to move around. But, uh, you know, I think we have to walk away from this woman and, and her attempts to work because she looks provocative. 
you know, that's the kind of climate that the internet is, isn't it? Man, this is, uh, this is, this is not a political lo-fi let's play at all. We're just having a nice day in the cyberpunk universe. Let's visit Shin. Um, you know, here he is. Uh, his, his pawn shop is filled with odd-looking junk that nobody wants, glued to their respective shelves. Um, let's see. By time and dirt, the smell of raw fish wafts in from a nearby sushi stall. Shin eyes you with a mixture of hope, greed, and suspicion. Ah, uh, you back. I have your deck, he says. Um, why is he in such a rush to give us our deck back? Well, probably because it's a pawn shop. Um, okay, give me the deck. Can't operate without one. How about, uh, please give that to us. Give ticket and money. Shin busy. Many customer. Okay, sure. You know, I'm told that if you're a jerk to him, you can get it for free, but why would you want to operate like that? You know, why would you want to be entitled and demanding of working people and, and uh, begrudge their right to, to earn to earn money for their work. Um, thanks for my deck, Shin. I really appreciate you looking after it. Okay, pal? Uh, nope, not gonna say that. Thanks for your thanks for your work. Let's let's go with that one. It's not a thing that you hear very often. Uh, Shin slams and bolts the door behind you as you leave and you know he's just had a hard day, so let's let's give him the benefit of the doubt and cut him a break as we continue to walk through the cyberpunk universe. Um, let's see what else is going on. We owe some money at Cheap Hotel, so uh, I would advise that we don't walk through there right now. And uh, let's see what else this universe has to offer us, this uh, intrepid guy, this cowboy. It's an advert. Whoa. One of Lonnie Zone's working girls is standing in the street, leaning against a light tower. She carefully looks you over. Hey, sailor. New in town? Um, if I've learned anything... Let's see, I'm not a sailor. Do I look like one? Yes, I'm new around here. Why? Buzz off sister. Zone's a close personal friend of mine. Drop dead. Wow. This, uh, this is some problematic interactions. Let's just, you know, let's just try to be up front. A little coy. A little bit honest. Yeah, I'm not a sailor lady. Uh, you look lost. Something I can do for you? No. Um, you know, why don't you, why don't we just avoid fraternizing with the type of people that are going to get us arrested? If we avoid and ignore women and, and, and avoid talking to them in the cyberpunk future, probably everything's going to be fine and, and our parameters are not going to be threatened in any way, shape, or form. Let's just walk safely into Metro Holographics and see what it has to offer us. This looks like a nice store. Let's just, you know, look for some fun to have. You're in a narrow canyon of impacted scrap in Metro Holographics when you meet Finn, the owner, whose head looks like it was designed in a, in a wind tunnel. Okay, that's, that's not, very, not a very nice observation, but, uh, hey kid, you need chips or software? I just got some new stuff from those bridge and tunnel kids in Jersey. Oh, I see, that's a little New York reference. Like, apparently the future is, is in the city. Um, okay, uh, yeah, we, we could use some stuff. Let's have a chat. Yeah, Finn, I'm looking for some hot softwares. Yeah, you know, when I was a kid on forums, I didn't understand even what softwares were, but it sounded like a cool thing. Um, let's see. Looking for some hot softwares. Let's give that as a response. He says, you want software? You got software. Wow, look at all this software. How do we know which one of these are softwares that we need? And, and ooh, a Comlink 1.0. That sounds like a good idea. Let's buy that. Okay, yeah, it seems affordable, and uh, generally it's a good design cue that things that you need early on in games are going to be affordable, right? Uh, you know, I like to think that. Uh, this game is actually not super intuitive, and <laughs> this actually might be the best I've ever done at it, and, and I'm so glad you're all along with me to, to witness my awesome performance in this cyberpunk universe um, amid a time of great stress, stress and strife and uncertainty about the fabric of the world we live in. Um, House of Pong. Let's see what else is going on around here. It's funny, you know, we're almost at the end of our time and... Oh, hold it there. We've got Armitage. Now we've got you. Oh, I guess our friend that we got uh, free credits for trading our banking info with might not have been on the level. Wow, it's, it's sort of fitting that uh, we end with incarceration when all we did was trust our environment. Um, <laughs> you find yourself in a justice booth. On the wall monitor is the huge image of a frowning compu judge. On the smaller monitor is the serious face of a compu lawyer. You've been charged with a serious crime, citizen. I'll be your judge. 
You know, I've been here before many times, friends. Um, incarcerated by the compu judge and the lawyer. 250 credits in advance. He's right. You need a lawyer. You're in big trouble, citizen. You know, and I've been in this situation a few times, and whether you pay the fee or not, whether you argue or not, whether you choose to defend yourself, the system is always against you, which perhaps is the most interesting takeaway of our time in the modern cyberpunk universe. We're all part of a system, and uh, at some point or another, you're probably going to feel like it's hurting you. And I think a lot of us feel like that this week, don't we? Let's defend ourselves. It's our funeral, says the compu attorney. Um, how do you plead, citizen? Um, this is an outrage. I haven't done anything. I'm innocent. I'm guilty. I throw myself on the mercy of the court. We haven't done anything. Um, I'm insane. I'm not responsible for my actions. I I'm going to choose to be outraged. How about that? You know what? It won't help. There can only be one verdict. We're guilty. We must stay in the city. We lose 500 credits. That's nearly half of what we sold our gallbladder for. Good, good heavens. Ha ha. Even the attorney who we hired to defend us is now gloating in our face. God, the internet future, cyberpunk land full of conspiracy theories is a terrible place. This is a blatant miscarriage of justice, let's say. We are free to go, but to not try to leave. And with that, friends, I think we're uh, coming to the end of our time here. Um, let's move along, citizens. Thank you for watching yet another Lo-Fi Let's Play. Um, I'd love to see what progress you guys can make with the Neuromancer game, and I'd also love to know how you're doing out there in the cyberpunk universe. I'm taking a break from Twitter right now, but I'll be able to retrieve my messages eventually, so you can get in touch with me, at Lee Alexander, or uh, in the comments here at RPS. Um, thank you so, so much for spending time with me, for journeying into games with me, and for looking deep into these beautiful worlds that we all love with me. And uh, I hope you're doing okay out there. Thank you.